everybody, it's Sarah and welcome to part 3 of my recommendations on Greek gods video. I will leave parts 1 and 2 up there and down in the description box as well. And if you want to know exactly how I came to create this series, of course you're going to have to watch part 1. But basically with the news of the Percy Jackson TV show, I wanted to do a type of recommendations based on Hogwarts houses video but based on the Greek gods. And so this is part three of this video series and we're going to talk all about the men in the Greek pantheon. First we have Apollo, who is of course Artemis' twin brother, but he's also a god of poetry and the fine arts in general. And so I wanted to choose a book that has just beautiful writing. And for that I went with The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. The Queen Killer Chronicles follows Quoth, who is this kind of almost legendary character and we follow him as he tells his life story during three days and each of the books is another day and another part of the story he tells. This book gets a lot of mixed things. Like a lot of people, especially if you don't like both, are not the biggest fan of the series, aren't the biggest fan of the way the story is built and written, think that Quoth is a little bit too much of like a male Mary Sue character. However, even most people who say they do not enjoy the story still say that this book is absolutely beautifully written. And that's because it is. Patrick Rothfuss is probably one of the writers with the most beautiful writing style that I have ever read. And I just, oh, I can highly, highly recommend just even reading a few of the chapters just to get a feel of his writing style because it's just unspeakable. I love it so, 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 so much. And so I thought this was the perfect book to choose for this. Of course, I also love the story in general. I really love Quoth as a character. I don't really mind that he's a bit of a Mary Sue. I think that's kind of part of the story for me. But yeah, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't love this book as a whole and only love the writing. You know what I mean? Apollo, of course, is also god of prophecy, so I wanted to choose a book with the chosen one trope since that quite often includes a prophecy. Otherwise, like, without a prophecy you can't really be the chosen one, right? And for that I wanted to choose a series that I haven't talked about that much on my channel yet, which is the Demon Child Trilogy by Jennifer Fallon. I know I talk about Jennifer Fallon quite a bit, but I talk a lot more about her other series, which is the Hydron Chronicles, which I personally prefer. However, that other one doesn't have a chosen one trope, which this one does. In this world a god is on the rise that kind of has to be killed. However, the only beings powerful enough have almost been like eradicated a few hundred years ago for one and also those beings physically cannot kill anybody. They cannot hurt or kill anyone or anything. And so this is where the demon child comes in. The demon child is the result of one of those beings, those powerful beings having a child with a human. So they are both really powerful but also can kill because humans are horrible and can kill. And so in this story we follow Rushil who might just be the fabled demon child. This is one of the first fantasy series I ever read. It still holds a place very close to my heart and I really need to go and reread it. I love the characters in it. I love Rashid. She is kind of an unlikable main character, but I don't even really mind. Some of my favorite side characters ever that I for some reason haven't talked about at all on my channel are from this series. And yeah, I can just highly, highly recommend it. Next I have Ares, the god of war. He's kind of like the opposite a little bit of Athena, where Athena is goddess of strategic warfare. Ares is just the god of war, like of all the brutal stuffs. And for that I wanted to recommend Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a YA sci-fi series in which we follow Spencer, who lives on a planet that is constantly attacked by aliens. She herself wants to become a fighter pilot, however she isn't allowed to become one because her father very famously turned into a coward and so they think she will turn into a coward as well and they don't want her to pilot one of the spaceships. This series has like such amazing dogfighting, spaceship fighting scenes. 
I absolutely loved it. I did not think I would enjoy that part of the series that much because I do not care too much about sci-fi. It's like, it's whatever. I read it because it's a Brendan Sanderson series. But honestly, usually even in fantasy series, I often kind of skim read fight scenes because either they're really well written or they're just kind of like, eh, whatever. However, with Brian Sands in general, the Mistborn series as well, but Skyward, we're talking about Skyward. In this series, I read every single spaceship fighting scene because they were just amazingly written and just so compelling to read. Ares, for some reason, I mean, I get it because he's the god of war, but like, if Hades isn't the evil guy in like Greek myth-inspired pop culture stories, most of the time Ares is the evil guy. He's hated on a lot in Greek mythology and so I wanted to recommend a book that I personally didn't like but that I still think a lot of people out there would enjoy. And for that I just wanted to recommend Terry Pratchett in general, the Discworld series. There's not really that much I can summarize about the Discworld series it's just absurdism at its peak, fantasy absurdism, and I personally found it a bit too much for me. I did enjoy reading the books, but I decided Terry Pratchett ultimately just isn't for me. However, I can still tell that he's an amazing author and that if you enjoy that, you will absolutely, absolutely love his books. The first book, the first book in the Discworld series, the Discworld series kind of consists of multiple different series, but like the, the first book that was published in a Discworld series is The Color of Magic, which I have right here. And so yeah, if you think that's something that you will enjoy Absurdist Fantasy, then definitely go ahead and pick this up. Next is Hephaestus, and Hephaestus is kind of the outcast among the gods. He isn't perfect, he's kind of ugly, he has a lame leg foot, and so he was cast from Olympus like into the volcano and like that's where he is right now and so I wanted to choose a book with disability rep which I have to sadly say there isn't a lot of on my shelves and in the end I went with A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Camera, which is the first book in the Curse Breaker series although I wouldn't recommend the series as a whole I would just recommend you read A Curse So Dark and Lonely as a standalone which I did really enjoy. And our main character in this series has cerebral palsy and because of that she has a lame foot as well or like she has problems in one of her legs. I do not know too much about cerebral palsy myself, however I have heard that this is quite good rap in terms of that. This book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, again we're following a dual timeline. One of the timelines of course is the prince that has been cursed and he has been cursed to relive the same season over over and over again and at the end of each season he turns into a huge monster and kills a bunch of people. And the other timeline is Harper who is a girl from our world who gets kidnapped into the realm of said prince and of course has to fall in love with him to break the curse. And I gotta say just overall again it's one of those YA fantasy reads that are really fun. I find Harper a really compelling character. I did not enjoy Ren too much. I do like Grey though who is kind of the captain of the guard and just again i can really recommend it it's a fast and easy read that's just fun in the moment and just enjoyable to get into hephaestus famously also is the tinkerer the handyman among the gods the smith and so i wanted to recommend book slash series with my favorite weapons which i have a lot of because i've read a lot of fantasy obviously but my favorite weapon since i first read this book is nihal's black crystal sword or black diamond sword from Licia Troisi's The Chronicles of the Emerged World. This series follows Nihal who is the last of her race, a half elf, and in this world it's kind of constant war because there's a tyrant who wants to just like conquer everything and Nihal as the last of her race wants to first of all take revenge but also she has this dream to become a dragon rider however only men are allowed to become dragon riders and so she sets off on the journey to join the academy of dragon riders and make them see how stupid they are and her father was a smith and he made her this beautiful i don't know if you can see it this beautiful black crystal sword which is like the hardest material in this world and later on she gets like a whole 
plate made of black crystal and it's just described so beautifully and wonderfully and I just love it and I don't even care that like having a sword out of black crystal doesn't even make sense because it, it seems it would shatter quite easily but yeah I, I just love her sword it doesn't even have a name shouldn't all great swords have a name I mean at least I don't think she ever gives it a name but yeah love it the last god for this video is Hermes, who is famously one of the only people who re repeatedly enters the underworld and goes out again. He's also like god of like borders and stuff. But for that I wanted to choose a book that features a journey. Because of course he's also god of travelers and I went with Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. And this is the first book in the Seven Wonders series that's a series of companion novels following the same like old Irish family and in this first series it's a retelling of the fairy tale of the six swans. We follow Sorker who has six brothers and her father one day remarries. This woman however is a sorceress who turns all her brothers into swans and to break the curse Sorka has to go on a journey and also knit shirts made of nettles and stay completely silent during the whole time. And so we follow Sorker as she just travels around the country and tries to find her brothers again, tries to save them. And I think it's an absolutely beautifully written story and I can just highly, highly recommend Juliet Marilly in general. I really need to read her books again. But yeah, she's one of my very, very old favorite authors. And once again, we're at the last recommendation. Hermes, of course, also takes the role of the trickster within the Greek pantheon. He's known to be very smart and very cunning. And so I wanted to choose a book with a very smart and cunning main character. And I kind of just like thinking of Hermes being god of tricksters and thieves. I just had really only one choice and I'm sorry if you've heard me talk about this book way too much already but I'm going to talk once again about the Gospel of Loki by Joanna M. Harris because Loki of course parts of the characterization of Loki are kind of the Norse pendant to Hermes and Greek mythology and this is Norse mythology like the entire Norse mythology but just from the point of view of Loki who thinks that the way things were retold during history just paint him in a bad light and hey guys he's not that much of a bad character anyway he's just it's just what he is he just is the trickster and I absolutely absolutely love this book it's hilarious and I can as always just highly recommend and that was it for this video I really hope you enjoyed it again the links to the first two videos in the series are linked down below if you want to go and watch those and haven't yet. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. Tell me in the comments down below what your favorite Greek god is because I do really want to know that. And like, also tell me your pet peeves of pop culture depiction of Greek gods because I find that really interesting that like Ares for some reason is always depicted as the bad guy. I don't think I know any pop culture references where he's one of the good guys he just either is like a no role person or he's the bad guy so yeah i would find it really interesting if you have similar things that just kind of annoy you a little bit and with that said all the links to my social media are as always also in the description box down below so go and check those out and i hope i'll see you soon bye